Hello students, today we're going to talk about bond energy as it relates to thermochemistry. We're going to learn about how we can estimate the energy of a reaction by simply looking at the bonds involved in that reaction. So let's get some background first of all. You need to understand that when bonds are broken, energy is required. We would represent this as a positive energy change. One way you can picture this, as we often do in chemistry, is if we showed the energy involved as a reaction occurs for endothermic reactions such as this one you start with something and you end up at a higher energy that is endothermic so in this case maybe we're talking about chlorine which is bonded to another chlorine and in order to separate those in order to break that bond and create a new substance it's going to require some energy so taking apart a molecule breaking a bond that's holding it together is an endothermic process it's pretty easy to remember you know you think if you're going to go outside and take apart a branch and separate it off a tree that's going to require some energy to do right you have to chop that branch off it's the same way with breaking bonds in chemistry it requires energy to separate those two things so you can probably imagine what's going to go in here if you make a bond when bonds are formed energy is released we describe this kind of process as a negative process so again if I wanted to show the energy change as this reaction progresses it's going to look more like this so we start off with something that gives us energy through this process let's say we started off with a hydrogen atom and a chlorine atom and then we connected those two things to make something that is more stable and in the process of doing that energy is released kind of like rolling down a hill we get energy out of this process we would say that is exothermic the last thing to remember is that the sum of the bond energies adding up all of the energies for each of the bonds that you had to break and each of the bonds that you made gives us a good estimation of the overall reaction energy this will probably make more sense once we do a couple of these but keep in mind as you're solving any of these problems whenever you end up with a positive energy this indicates that the process was endothermic energy was required and if you end up with a negative energy of course that would be exothermic energy is released when you calculate a negative energy in chemistry all right let's talk a little bit about these bond energies so you look these up in a published table and when you do your assignments you'll have access to a bond energy table and this allows you to estimate a whole variety of different chemical reactions uh, many of the reactions that involve carbon or hydrogen oxygen nitrogen we have published bond energies for those for our assignment today so something I just thought I'd point out to you in looking at this table a little pattern here um, check out what happens when you go from a single bond to a double bond or even a triple bond look what happens to the bond energy again this should be intuitive but breaking a triple bond costs a lot more energy than just breaking a double bond or a single bond um, this is generally the case with all of these multiple bonded substances so it's the same with nitrogen sometimes you'll see nitrogen in a compound with a double bond sometimes you'll find it with a triple bond and the triple bond takes more energy to break than the double bond okay so let's jump into an example problem it says calculate the energy for the reaction below now in this problem there are no drawings but you may be given Lewis drawings Lewis structures for the compounds that you are calculating I'm going to save us the trouble of going through the process of how these are drawn by just drawing these for you and you'll notice that I'm drawing this twice because there are two of these carbon monoxides I happen to know from doing this one a lot that carbon monoxide will need a triple bond in order to follow uh, the octet rule and make sure that the atoms have enough electrons notice over here that oxygen there's only one of those so I'm going to draw my oxygen this way oxygen has a double bond in the 
lone pairs aren't important, but to make my drawings accurate, I'm going to go ahead and draw them in. Um, they don't factor into our bond energy calculations. Remember, we're focused on the bonds between the atoms. So when these things combine, they end up forming two of these molecules, carbon with a double bonded oxygen on either side, we call it carbon dioxide. And to make all the numbers work out, we're going to end up with two of these carbon dioxides. Okay, so let's focus in here on what we actually do in this process. We take this triple bond and this triple bond, so we have to take two of those carbon-oxygen triple bonds and break them. And so to break that bond and this bond is going to require some energy. And if we go back and look at the table, we'll find that a carbon to oxygen triple bond requires a lot of energy. That's 1,072 kilojoules per mole of energy. So I'm just going to write those numbers down over here. 1,072 for each one. And then let's look at this bond here. We have to break an oxygen-oxygen double bond. And the oxygen-oxygen double bond requires pretty good amount of energy as well, 495 kilojoules for every mole, 495. And then finally, after we've broken those three bonds, we're going to make a bunch of new bonds. Now, this one, it looks like, is repeated four times. So instead of writing the number down four times, let me just look it up and we'll multiply it times four. We're looking for a carbon to oxygen double bond. And the carbon to oxygen double bond is about 799 kilojoules per mole. Keep in mind, these are estimates, and sometimes they don't give us perfect results, but they do give us a pretty close estimate on the overall energy for this reaction. So let's make sure I multiply that four times. Now we get out our calculator and we add up all of these values. Now before we add them, let me give each of these numbers a sign so that I make sure I come out with the correct answer. Remember before we said when you break bonds, that requires energy. That is an endothermic process. That means all of these, we're going to have to put that energy into the reaction. They get positive signs. When you make a bond that gives you energy, that is exothermic, so I'm going to put a negative sign in front of uh, my 799 kilojoules. And remember, we're multiplying that four times. So at this point, let me get out a calculator. So I'm going to add up 1,072 twice, plus 495. So that's all the energy that I put into this reaction. And then I'm going to release 799 kilojoules four times. So at a negative sign, I'm going to subtract 799 times 4. And we end up with a net energy change of minus 557. So negative 557 kilojoules for every mole. So that's how you calculate a bond energy. Let's try one more example. In this example, we're going to do it for a uh, combustion reaction, combustion of methane. And again, if you're fortunate, maybe you will, uh, you will be given the drawings of these to begin with. And I've got to break this bond and this bond and this bond and this bond. So four times I have to break a carbon to hydrogen single bond. Carbon to hydrogen single bond is going to cost me 413 kilojoules for each one. So let me just do that four times. 413. That's going to be a positive sign on that. It's requiring energy. In addition to that, I'm going to have to break an oxygen-oxygen double bond. I have to do that two times. So let's look up the cost for that process. Oxygen-oxygen double bond. 495 kilojoules per mole. i got to do that twice. And then I make some bonds. So I make this bond here, the carbon to oxygen double bond. I'm making two of those. So when you make bonds, that releases energy. We look that up on our bond energy table. Find out that bond energy was 799. 
So that's going in my equation as minus 799 since we formed those. And then we also get energy out of forming these bonds. And it looks like we're doing that four times, that oxygen to hydrogen single bond. So let me add that up four times. And again, a negative sign. And the oxygen to hydrogen, 463 kilojoules per mole. All right, so I'm going to get out my calculator now. We had 4 times 413 plus 2 times 495 minus 2 times 799 minus 4 times 463. And it looks like the final answer here is 808, 808 kilojoules. It's got a negative sign on it. So I will record that as my final answer. We could say then that delta H equals minus 808 kilojoules per mole. Now if you actually did an experiment with this, you might measure that as a slightly different answer. Remember these are estimates, but it's going to be close. It's definitely an exothermic reaction when you burn methane and oxygen, and you should get out somewhere around 800 kilojoules for every mole. So this is how you do a bond energy problem. Good luck with yours, and uh, contact me if you have any questions.